Brian, you're on your fifth feature film now. So are you feeling more hopeful about filmmaking 2014 than you did 15 years ago? Um, in my own career, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel great. I feel extremely hopeful. Um, and I, it's because I'm, I'm growing as a human being and growing as a filmmaker. And I'm hopeful just in life in general. So yeah, I'm extremely excited about it. And um, I, it's absolutely. Do you see though that it's more of a job now? You, so going back to the, I wish it was a, jo a full time <laughs> job. Ab okay. Geez, I wish. Mm -hmm. I wish. Yeah. I mean, I wish I would get you know, uh, would make enough money on these films to make a decent living. But you know, I have to just keep doing what I'm, keep practicing it, and and one day you know it'll be. Oh, that's true. That's a tough question. I mean. It's not just work. It's 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 livelihood. It's um. You know, it's an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. Every day, every time I meet someone who could I could potentially work with, that's an opportunity. Whether it's an actor or a or a crew person, whether it's a, like an I'm looking for a great art director right now. I mean, that's an opportunity for me to develop a relationship that could go on for another ten years. So every person I come in contact with is just another, you know, opportunity to enrich my life and their life. So that's how I look at it. So since you said it, it's not quite a job because it's not a constant paycheck, mm -hmm. again, going back to what motivates you, it's just you have to get these stories out of you, it sounds like. It's just what I do. I mean, it, I, I've been fortunate that you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time and, you know, this is how my, this is what I've, what I've, the bet I've made for myself. You know, I'm, I'm an independent filmmaker. I'm going to have good years. I'm gonna have bad years, and uh, you know, as I work my way up, um, I hope to keep climbing up this big hill, and I, I hope that I don't reach a point where I'm just climbing parallel. You know, I want to keep fighting a good fight, fighting a good battle to get to where, um, uh, you know, to be heard and to reach a wide audience and to, and to affect people, and um, so. I like that. So you said this is what you've chosen for yourself. Did you know that from the beginning, that it was a choice? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think it was going to be like, you know, you never think it's going to turn out like this, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm very happy and, and fortunate I've been able to, 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 to make these films. Um, I, I didn't know it was going to be this hard, that's for sure. Not at all. At what point did you say to yourself, this is a choice, I'm going to keep going with it. I'm not going to give up and say they wouldn't let me in. I'm still going to make movies. Um, I would say when I was going, trying to, when I was applying, like right as I got into film school, and I applied to a lot of big film schools. I didn't, I didn't get into a lot of them because my standardized testing wasn't as high as like, some, you know, what they should have been to get into a big school. So I think when my first year of film school, I had a professor who was just so negative and like such a, Bad, gave bad vibes in the classroom. I was like, you can't do this. And I told him my, my idea for my project. And he goes, you'll never pull that off, John. He goes, you'll never, this idea you have in your head, in your 17-year-old head, you won't pull that off. And I never forgot that. Because I wanted to shoot in a hotel, and I had like, I wanted to do all these things. And I proved him wrong. I did it. And at the very end, when, when I, whenever, he never apologized for treating me like that, but my last meeting, when the class was over, he had like a review, I guess. He said, well, John, you did it. You pulled it off. And that's all he said. You know, I'd never forget. That's one of those things you never forget. Um, so, and plus, if, if other people can do it, I mean, they're shooting a TV show in this hotel right now. Those people working on that show, that director and those producers, they're no smarter or more talented than the majority of people out here fighting. Me and all the people watching this interview or watching all the other interviews, it's just, you know, they got the opportunity to do that. That director knew the right person. He got the opportunity to go direct that TV show, you know. The cards fell into place. He had more resources. That's fine, you know. It's just... So what would you have said to 17-year-old Brian Jung back then, if you were that professor? What would you have said to him? Like, oh, this is going to be a hard scene. 
You can try it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what would you... Oh, like, well, I would say, do you have... I would probably say, do you have permission to shoot here? He didn't even... Like, do you have a permit? Like, how are you going to... You know, do you have permission? Have you talked to them? What are you going to do if someone gets hurt? I would just ask all the practical things that you would ask. Um, you know, are you going to... Where you... If you're shooting up in Alton, because I was going to school in Carbondale, are you going to use crew from the film school? If you are, how are they all getting up there? Or are you going to use crew? You know, I would ask more practical questions. He just said, I can't, couldn't do it. Instead of trying to figure out how I was going to do it and be constructive about it, he just said, I couldn't do it. Which is like the worst thing a teacher could say to a student, you know. And I remember his name, too, because you don't, um, I remember this guy's name, because you know, you forget all these teachers' names, but I remember this guy's name. I don't want to say it, but, and I'm almost thankful. I'm almost thankful he did that. Because, you know, that's, I didn't forget it, you know.